All right, we have major developments tonight from the Mueller witch hunt. Here's what you need to know. First, the special counsel's memo on Paul Manafort is out. It is heavily redacted. We do know, however, that Robert Mueller believes that Paul Manafort breached his plea deal and lied to investigators, all surrounding alleged crimes, none of which have anything to do with President Trump, none of which have to do with Russia, or anything to do with collusion. Instead, a source with knowledge of the investigation tonight telling Fox News that much of the redacted information likely includes potential criminal allegations, we are told, against Tony Podesta. That would be John Podesta's brother, Democratic lobbyist. John Podesta, of course, the Clinton campaign chair. Absolutely nothing. Now, we're talking about, in the Manafort case, tax evasion, other charges, bank loan applications, dating back to 2007. White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders issued this statement and said, quote, the government's filing in Mr. Manafort's case says absolutely nothing about the president. It says even less about collusion. It is devoted almost entirely to lobbying related issues. And I'll add, long before Paul Manafort ever met Donald Trump. And also breaking today, two separate sentencing memos were filed against one-time Trump attorney Michael Cohn. First, the Southern District of New York completely rejecting Cohn's pleas for leniency, writing that, quote, a substantial term of imprisonment is warranted. Then the memo continues Cohn's decision to plead guilty rather than seek a pardon for his many-fold crimes does not make him a hero. In exchange for Cohn's guilty plea, the prosecutors recommended only a slight reduction to the suggested five-year prison sentence. And meanwhile, the next memo from the special counsel, well, that focused on Cohn admitting that he lied under oath to the federal government, writing, quote, the sentence imposed should reflect the fact that lying to federal investigators, in fact, has real consequences. Let's be clear. The one thing that these two filings have in common, nothing to do with Russia or collusion at all. Zero evidence in any of these documents of Trump-Russia collusion, zero. Now, today, the president, he applauded the ruling. He tweeted, quote, totally clears the president. Thank you. And the president's attorney, Rudy Giuliani, called these findings, quote, complete exoneration of the president. They have nothing. We are very happy about it. And president and Giuliani, they're right about this. Legal scholar Alan Dershowitz, very passionate tonight, echoing a lot of these sen sentiments, including, by the way, saying, don't ever think about making a deal with Mueller because it's not going to work out too well for you. Take a look. Right now, it does not sound like it's good news for Mueller. It doesn't sound like in Cohen they have found a witness that will give them the key to the kingdom. Uh, so far, the only solid evidence that he has provided is the campaign contribution issue, and it's a very, very weak case. Oh, so tonight, we have two men facing years behind bars. A third, George Papadopoulos, was released from prison today after serving his 12-day sentence for lying to Mueller's investigators. Meanwhile, we had earlier in the week American hero Michael Flynn. Well, he pled guilty to lying to investigators and will become a convicted felon, but only after his reputation and his finances were totally destroyed. And the question is, for what? When you read these documents, we hear about taxi medallions, uh, fraudulent loan applications, applications, tax evasion, lying about a potential project in M Moscow that never got off the ground, and whether they stopped talking about it in January 2016 or June in 2016. Wow, the horror. How will America ever recover? Clearly, an election was stolen by all this information. After months of intense investigations, millions and millions and millions of your dollars spent, seedy perjury traps legal coercion we have absolutely no evidence of any wrongdoing by the president of the united states and then you ask yourself this question do you feel safer tonight do you feel safer that a low-level campaign volunteer he spent his 12 days in jail for allegedly lying to the omnipotent robert Mueller? do you feel safer that an american military hero lieutenant general flynn that he had to sell his house to pay his legal bill be, le legal bills oh the thanks one gets for 33 years of service to his country, five of those years in combat. By the way, neither Comey, McCabe, Strzok, or anybody in the FBI thought he lied. But, of course, they put the screws to General Flynn, and he had to compose a lie about lying, and he did it to protect his family and to get out of the mess economically that they were putting him in. 
Do you feel any safer tonight that Michael Cohen is going to go to prison for a significant amount of time? Let's see, for lying to Congress, lying on a bank loan application, taxi medallion loans, not paying taxes? Do you feel safer knowing that Manafort might spend the rest of his life behind bars because of, again, tax fraud and lies on loan applications had nothing to do with Russia years before he met Trump? Do you feel safer that everyone surrounding the president is seemingly targeted and those on the left get away every single day scot-free? Is that the America we want to live in? Take, for example, fired FBI Director James Comey and what we learned this week about him. The Hill's John Solomon reporting, we now have email chains that prove that Comey and others in Obama's DOJ, that they actually knowingly committed fraud on a FISA court, and they used Hillary Clinton's bought and paid for phony Russian dossier, the bulk of the evidence in their FISA applications, in their case to obtain a warrant to spy on a Trump campaign associate by the name of Carter Page. Well, they did all of this, we learned this week, knowing full well that the intel community did not trust the contents of Hillary's bought and paid Russian dossier. In other words, they knowingly committed fraud on the FISA courts, not once, not twice, not three, but four times. Where's that investigation into Jim Comey and Sally Yates and Rod Rosenstein and everybody else that signed on to those FISA applications, giving judges fraudulent, unverified, uncorroborated Russian lies, not telling the judges that it was directly paid for by the opposition party candidate to spy on an opposition party. So today, Comey testified behind closed doors on Capitol Hill. His attorneys allegedly ran cover for him and prevented him from answering any tough questions. And during a subsequent press conference, arrogantly, he's brushing off any charges that his FISA court conduct was wrong and illegal and disgusting. But I want you to think of this. Remember, he's the guy that signed on to that first warrant. That was in October 2016. But that means he had to verify it was true. That meant he verified it. That means he corroborated that corroborated it. That means he's standing behind it. But yet in January, at Trump Tower, he told Donald Trump, then president-elect, that it was salacious and unverified. Watch this. I have total confidence that the FISA process was followed and that the entire case was handled in a thoughtful, responsible way by DOJ and the FBI. I think the notion that FISA was abused here is nonsense. Not even Christopher Steele believes his own dossier, and he's still defending it. The bulk of information used to get warrants to spy on Americans. Is that a little more important tonight? I would think it is. We all know the dossier was and is a debunked lie. Comey never verified it. Nobody verified it. Nobody corroborated Steele's so-called evidence. Steve Steele himself wouldn't stand by it when questioned under oath in an interrogatory down in Great Britain, even after it was used to obtain a FISA warrant even when he said it was salacious and unproven months after they had the FISA warrant in place. And James Comey, I guess he'll sleep well tonight knowing that our two-tier justice system will likely never hold him accountable. So till will these liars. People that lied under oath, well, Michael Cohn's in trouble tonight because of it. What about Cheryl Mills or Uma Abedin or Bruce Orr or Glenn Simpson, Christopher Steele, James Clapper, John Brennan, Andrew McCabe, Lois Lerner, Loretta Lynch, Eric Holder, yeah, all those lied to authorities. They were never prosecuted, never even investigated in many cases. And let's not forget about James Comey. Remember, he lied to Congress under oath, but I doubt he'll get the Cone treatment tonight. And then you have the king and queen of corruption, Bill and Hillary Clinton. From mishandling top secret, classified information, obstructing justice, what, deleting subpoenaed emails, acid washing hard drives with bleach pit, busting up hammer by hammers devices, phones and, and blackberries, leveraging their political positions in order to rake in millions of dollars. The Clintons tonight are perhaps this country's most corrupt politicians, and they have never, ever, ever been held accountable. But that might be about to change. John Solomon, breaking news right here on this program last night. Federal authorities received whistleblower information in 2017, alleging that the Clinton Foundation of a whole bunch of wrongdoing. Congressman Mark Meadows has confirmed that the whistleblowers have, in fact, turned over hundreds of foundation documents to lawmakers and potentially now shedding light into the Clinton's cloud of corruption. We're talking about information surrounding quid pro quo promises made to big donors while Hillary Clinton was Secretary of State 
and the co-mingling of funds with the foundation and the Clinton's private money, and so much more, including one glaring example when Hillary Clinton as Secretary of State, remember this deal, signed off on sending 20 percent of our uranium, the foundational material for nuclear weapons, to Vladimir Putin. And by the way, this occurred as the Clinton Foundation was receiving millions and millions of dollars from the chairman of Uranium One and all the banks involved. Now think about this. We knew that Putin had an operative, operatives inside the United States. William Campbell was a spy within that network, identifying bribery, extortion, kickbacks, and money laundering. And guess what? Robert Mueller was the FBI director. And in the end, Putin not only got the foothold into our uranium market, the deal happened, and none of those people got in trouble. But the Clintons got their money. They got the kickback to the foundation in terms of millions and millions of dollars. So tonight, an investigation we now know, as of yesterday, is ongoing. And I've said over and over, it is time in America, if we care about our constitutional republic, that we end a two-tier justice system that we have equal application of our laws and equal justice under the law. And now we do have more good news. A federal judge just today agrees with me. Judge Royce Lamberth, who's overseeing Judicial Watch's Freedom of Information Act lawsuit that involves Hillary's secret server email saga. Well, he dropped a major bombshell this week about just how far the government is willing to go to skirt transparency laws, writing, quote, at best, the state's attempt to pass off its deficient search as legally adequate during settlement negotiations was negligence born out of incompetence. At worst, career employees in the state and justice departments colluded to scuttle public scrutiny of Clinton, skirt FOIA, Freedom of Information Act, and hoodwink this court. And he didn't stop there, calling the Clinton email affair, quote, one of the gravest modern offenses to government transparency. This judge has now ordered additional fact-finding in the case, but this is massive news, and we'll continue to keep you updated.